everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited today. We have a returning guest uh, that uh, we love talking with. We have Cindy Busby is here. And Cindy, thank you so much for coming back. Yes, it's my pleasure. I'm so excited to talk with you again. I can't I know. believe it's been, like you said, two years. Whew. Yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. You were one of our early interviews uh, when we first started. Uh, one of the first like big names that we were like super excited. We're like, we're interviewing a famous person. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, thank you. I, yeah. I have, I'm happy to be back. <laughs> yeah. So what we've been doing uh, the, the last few months is kind of just starting out talking about your experience in quarantine. And uh, did you do any crafting or crazy baking or anything like that? Or was it pretty, um, pretty Yeah, pretty I, I, I know that. A lot of people were doing, like, I had a lot of friends that got on the baking train of, yeah. you know, baking bread for the first time and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I have never been good with, like, chemistry, so baking <laughs> has never been my thing. And I keep trying for some reason. I'm like, you know, to my significant other, I'm like, okay, I made these this banana bread or these muffins, and we'll eat them, and he's so nice. And he's like, oh, wow, these are good. And I'm like, are they, though? Like... <laughs> So I've kind of um, given up on that, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 you know, I painted part of my house. I had like these older tables, and I was like, "What can I do with this?" And I like repainted those, and just you know, putting up new art in the house, and just kind of keeping busy. But you know, the last, I tried to find uh, the positive in certain mm -hmm. things that sometimes don't feel like they yeah. are this moment in time, and. <laughs> You know, the, the thing that I've walked away from is despite the challenges, I, I feel grateful that I have so many incredibly supportive people in my life and that I'm able to touch base with and that we live in a modern world where we can use technology like Zoom right yeah. now, or, yeah. you know, Zoom has never been more popular <laughs> and FaceTime and, you know, and I have friends all over the world. So it's like allowed me to connect with them. But yeah, it's certainly, it's not been, diff it's not been easy for yeah. a lot of people including myself and you know we all go have ebbs and flows and ups and downs but mm -hmm. uh, I'm grateful to be you know healthy and yeah. here with so it definitely has put everything in perspective I mean things that you just took for granted all of a sudden being ah. gone things you never thought would be taken from you all of a sudden were just gone okay. like I that for example yeah I totally we ran out of it but there we were yeah, yeah. you're <laughs> just like <laughs> hoping that I, I mean I was lucky because I had gotten a, like two weeks before it all started I yeah. I had a um subscribe and save on Amazon and I'd gotten oh, no. my you know my shipment and so I was very very fortunate but uh but yeah no it was definitely a tense moment which is like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the unknown you know anything yeah. that's like unknown to us or new to us is mm -hmm. you know can be scary at first and then yeah. you know kind of learn to just deal with it as best you can and it's never going to be perfect so you just got to make the most with what you can and yeah. each day like i said is going to be different so just mm -hmm. don't be hard on yourself is yeah. what i've learned <laughs> yeah yeah and also that uh, there's something about the fact that all of us are experiencing something totally new uh, yeah. that uh, you know you think most of life is doing the same stuff over and over and over and over again and right. but and not this year <laughs> no we're all in this together and yeah, yeah. It's, um you know i i think at the end of the day i'm a big advocate for you know, bringing people together and not mm -hmm. creating separation, whatever yeah. that is, and, you know, treating everything with love. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's an exercise in practicing that despite hard times. And that, that can be sometimes challenging in itself, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. 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 So when you painted, did you, did you get to pick out the paint color or did you fight it out with your partner? <laughs> well, he picked the like we did um, some stuff in the living room. And so he picked that color. And of course I was happy with it. Um, and then I was like, okay, you got to pick this color. So then I'm picking the one for the bedroom. And uh, so I got to go with like a dark purple. Oh, okay. But, you know, I, I don't know. I think colors, it's like, there's no, you know, this colors for this person or this mm -hmm. colors for that 
person, but you know, we all enjoy different colors. If it was up to me, my entire house would be the color of my shirt, which is pink. So, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he might not go for that. Um, so yeah, we, we were able to do that. And, you know, just right. like, I know nothing tests a relationship like putting together Ikea furniture and oh, picking out, uh, picking out that, a, <laughs> together a piece of Ikea furniture yeah, and I swear, yeah. The, the instructions they gave us were not the right ones. Like I was just like something that should have taken us, you know, an hour and a half took us like the entire afternoon. And I was just like, what? They, they don't even give you instructions. It's just like hieroglyphics in Swedish. You're like, what is wrong here? And I like went on their website and I went on YouTube being like, how to make this. Like, <laughs> that's everything. Um, and I still could not get it, yeah. but we, we did it. We managed to figure something out, and uh, yeah. yeah, I'm happy that's over with. You're successful. It looks good. Yeah. It looks good, but yeah, it was it was uh, definitely a test of time. <laughs> I swear, one time, my parents, because my parents have very different design aesthetics, very yeah. different, and I, I swear, one time, they spent a year looking over wallpaper samples. It was <laughs> so long, they could not come to an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's a, a metaphor for life, I guess. It's yeah, gonna be right. start with wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh well, very good. This is uh this has been a yeah, crazy time for all of us. It's something yeah. we'll never forget, that's for sure. Yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh so all right. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, we're going to start with your most recent project and we're going to go back and then we'll, we'll sort of, uh, circle on back to the upcoming film. For so sure. it'd be kind of fun. And so we had love in the forecast that just came out yep. and that must've been fun to have a movie come out during quarantine. Not many <laughs> said that. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I, I always feel grateful anytime I get to work because mm -hmm. I know that, you know, being an actor is, is not an easy thing. And I've had my struggles in the mm -hmm. industry myself, you know, and, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, we shot that movie right before it all happened. Like I remember on set, there was like, you know, like little whispers about, you know, all this happening and that kind of thing. But yeah, we finished it. I went home and then, you know, there was lockdown things. So, um, but yeah, it was so much fun to shoot it. You know, I got to shoot in Vancouver and it was my first time uh, working with Christy Will Wolf, which was so much fun. Mm -hmm. I absolutely adore her. And, uh, and again, I got to work with Christopher Russell, which um, we had actually done a movie together um, called P A Puppy for Christmas, like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but during that time, we'd only had about like two or three days of work together. So this was really nice to kind of like five years mm -hmm. later to get to work together and, and a lot cl more closely mm -hmm. and, you know, for a longer period of time. But yeah, he's hilarious. He's so much fun. Mm -hmm. We had a blast. Did you want to steal that umbrella? Yes, uh, uh, <laughs> I did. Wasn't it beautiful? Yeah, the it was. colored one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of beautiful umbrellas and all the rain jackets. And I did get to keep the pink rain jacket. Oh, nice. Um, which um, was really nice. I was like, can I keep it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was. And funny enough, I've, I've mentioned this before, like, because we shot in Vancouver. And Vancouver, you, usually in February, can be a little bit of the rainy season still mm -hmm. and sometimes you're fighting rain but of course we decided to make a movie about rain and it didn't rain i think it rained like <laughs> one day and i was like oh, of course you know when you don't want it to rain it rains and when you want it to rain it doesn't rain it's yeah but don't uh, they have like special rain that they want in yeah. movies exactly so yeah we had rain towers even though it would have rained we would have had to have rain towers as well because this is the crazy part about making movies is that the water when it rains naturally usually doesn't show up on camera unless it's really big droplets um yeah. so that which is a positive which means you can often hide if it's raining um if you don't want it to rain on camera uh you know of course your hair will get wet eventually but if it's like a short scene uh but yeah mm. we had to have rain towers which will get you soaked in like a matter of seconds. <laughs> it's like literally yeah. a waterfall just goes <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I, I I don't think I'd worked with rain towers before. Like I'd seen them, but um, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, because the water's like milky colored, right? 
Yeah, I mean, it's like a little bit milky and just, it's just got to be real big raindrops. Otherwise, the camera doesn't pick it up, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. I, I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, we enjoyed the film. We, we did kind of laugh though that we're like, I I kind of would want my my uh, weather weather person to be following science. I I, I would right. be I feel more comfortable than the uh, the flowers are drooping. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I'm on Team Cindy's side. <laughs> you know and, and it may have been stretched a little bit but I think there's something really cool about you know taking those moments and appreciating what nature has to offer mm -hmm. as well I mean of course science is you can't you can't say it's not important it's vital but um it is true like how the little things you don't know about that you know how the birds react and how ants react and like how nature is just all intertwined and just works together is like is a pretty magical thing, mm -hmm. I, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, so for God Wink Christmas, the sequel, or the, or the second in anthology, really, yes. is how, they, how it was. So did you end up like researching MS in order to prepare? Did you, because you had to show some of the symptoms yeah. and have things. Uh, did you talk to the real, uh, I think it was Alice? What's your character's name? Yeah, Alex and Jack. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, I did do some research. Of course, you know, I, I want to try to do anything I portray on television or movies justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so anything that I found in the script, I was able to, you know, break down and really look up. And, and the thing about MS is it, it can be so different in so many different people and, mm -hmm. and affect them in different ways. And um. So that was a very interesting part that I learned through the research that I made. Um, but uh, yeah, we did get to speak to the real Alice and Jack, um, Ben Hollingsworth and I. Uh, we had a big uh, Zoom chat, the producers and us. And it was actually, we only got to speak to them, um, I think it was at the end of the second week of shooting. And I wish we could have gone back and like talked to them earlier on, but it, it just didn't work with scheduling. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were honestly like more incredible than I could have ever imagined. They were so loving and Jack is so incredibly caring and like just the perfect partner. And I was just like, oh, their love. Like I like started tearing up when I was talking to them because I like couldn't handle how beautiful their story was. Mm -hmm. Like just even from the reading the script, but then seeing it in front of me was just like, oh, you guys, like I'm such a suck for romance and, and love, you know, and. Um, but yeah, it's, I think, I think it's vital for actors to do as much research as they can on the people, on the situations. And, yeah. you know, if you're not, and of course, you know, taking that and then playing it within, you know, the story you're telling, it's still television. So it's never going to be exactly, it's like, you know, when you translate a book into a movie, it's never going to be right. exactly how you want it, but you try to do it the best you can. Mm -hmm. Well, we have one of our co-hosts has MS and I know she really appreciated your effort there. And I, I enjoyed the, the film, I, I honestly, more than I was expecting. I, uh, I, I liked the first one just because I like Kimberly and Paul, uh, but I, it wasn't my favorite. Um, but I, I don't know, I thought that this one, I liked all of your like, little banter uh, between uh, like when you go to the wedding yeah. And then that like little scene in the hallway when yeah. you're uh, when you're getting kind of chummy and close, yeah. and all of that. And then I I felt like your character made sense. Like I understood why she was moving away, especially in a new relationship. Like it made sense to me, uh, and I thought that was super cute. I know other some people didn't like it, but I liked the way he he had this the sign in the window. Oh, I, know. I thought it was cute. <laughs> Kind of a love actually moment yeah and yeah I, I i appreciate you saying that i i truly had such an amazing time making that movie and getting to work with kathy lee gifford was mm -hmm. like incredible and i felt like we had such a great connection on camera and ben and i actually knew each other a little bit um from way back in the day he did an episode or two of Heartland um, a million mm -hmm. years ago. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was really nice to reconnect with him and yeah, and just to get to tell an incredible story. And, uh, 
And like you said, you know, to get to get feedback, which I was so grateful to receive from people who either are um, diagnosed with MS or have family members with MS and were sending me messages telling me like, thank you for, you know, making awareness around this and creating mm -hmm. a story with that. And I, I didn't expect to receive that, but man, it, it was, it was really nice to get. And mm -hmm. if for nobody else, if I can create a, be a part of a story that, you know, touches people um, firsthand, uh, that means the world to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Especially around Christmas. It's, oh. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, those heartstrings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So you got to be in the, uh, the one of the wedding march movies, Wedding March Five. Yep. And so, what was that like to get to work with that crew and particularly with Tyler? Uh, oh, we've yeah. had him on our podcast twice, and we Isn't love him. Best? Yeah, oh, so nice. Such a sweetheart, and he's also hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, and I think we've all individually said this in various, you know, behind the scenes and in interviews, but like, it was one of those things that just went click, like all the pieces fell together. It was like the perfect puzzle um, where everyone just showed up. Everyone wanted to hang out. Everyone had great chemistry. Like there, I'm, I'm not like, I can't even make that up. It was truly like perfect. Mm -hmm. Josie like her and I connected so deeply and then you know Tyler and I again like I didn't really know him but I felt like I knew him because mm -hmm. he, he and I have a lot of like friends in common you know and yeah so, and right away when we met each other it was like boom like and uh you know of course Jack is hilarious and he's super fun and like he had his guitar on set a couple times and we just really enjoyed hanging out together like not just while we were shooting mm -hmm. the scene, but like in our green rooms and stuff. And we mm -hmm. just couldn't get enough of each other. I was like, yeah. is this real? What's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and again, like, you know, when you work with Jack and Josie, who are veteran actors, have been around for, you know, decades mm -hmm. and, and have such a big name for themselves, but then you meet them and they're like so down to earth and just like, just good people. Mm -hmm. And that just makes it, so much easier for everyone else part of the cast to just feel right at home in something and i i felt like that i think if your lead actors are just super welcoming it just makes everything flow well well i mean it must be if they keep wanting to make the movies i mean yeah. I, I, we were just glad that they finally got engaged because I know. Go another <laughs> promise ring i can't do it anymore yeah. um but <laughs> that there gets to be a wedding one i that. know i feel like we've earned it we need it yes, i agree, we, I agree. I, yeah that I, would be so fun. I was like before long there's gonna be more uh more <laughs> wedding march movies than star wars movies <laughs> <laughs> um, that is that's amazing that would be incredible yeah but well, we love also lane edwards uh oh, he's a favorite of ours absolutely yeah. lane yeah lane's a good friend of mine we've been friends for years and years and we we're part of the same agency and so when we found out we we're gonna work together we we're like what yes yeah. it's always again it's you know as the longer you are in the industry the smaller the world gets because you just start to get to know you know you either work with friends or you yeah. work with your friend's friend or boyfriend girlfriends whoever and that's always that's always yeah. so much more welcoming yeah uh, so in between these Hallmark films, you've done some Lifetime movies. You've yeah. ventured over to the, to the, <laughs> to the dark side. Uh, and is that, is that fun for you though, to play these, you know, these thrillers and these other things like that, uh, after playing these sweet movies? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think life is bad. You know, you gotta have balance and I am like, I'm like forever grateful to Hallmark. Like they're, you know, they have a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. But of course, sometimes, you know, I like to venture out and, and do other things. And um, yeah, a couple opportunities came my way and I was excited to do something different. And yeah. uh, you know, the wrong stepmother was, was a fun <laughs> opportunity to play something very different and a little bit darker. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is, which is good, you know, like, as an actor, you want to play all types of people, all yeah. walks of life, and uh, it allowed me to exercise a muscle that I hadn't really had an opportunity to do much of before, and 
and so I'm I'm really happy about that. And then yeah. of course, um, the killer downstairs was really fun, and I got to work mm-hmm. with Marcus Rosner. And so, um, yeah, I yeah. I I don't I don't have um, a lot of you know I have certain boundaries that I won't cross with work stuff. But for the most sure. part, I'm really open to opportunities and something that I haven't done before, something that'll um, see me in a different light as well. Yeah just to get to portray something else that's part of humanity, which is, you know, kind of the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. The wrong series are a lot of fun. They, (laughs) they just had the wrong wedding planner recently. Uh, so oh, that's I, awesome. That's like uh, a take on the wedding march, but yeah, the evil, <laughs> the evil, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And they, they have the psycho series too. Psycho that's grandma. Right. Psycho. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I had a friend that was one, uh, psycho babysitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're fun. You know, it's, it's quirky. Yeah. It, and there's also, you know, a little bit of comedy in them too, in like a yeah. dark way. And yeah. My favorite was the psycho grandma though. It showed a Thanksgiving dinner with all, <laughs> all the family. It's, it's like, is dead. And oh she's sitting goodness. there with her like, ah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's definitely a, a Thanksgiving gone wrong for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's been moments in all of our lives where we've had like moments at Christmas or Thanksgiving where we're like, this family stuff is, is a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's very good. All right. Well, so you had married Mr. Darcy. Uh, so was that fun to kind of come back to that role yeah. and you get, you get to marry Ryan Peavy twice in that movie. And I know. That, that can't be too shabby. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, why not make it three? Um, right. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You know, it was, it was, it was definitely cool. I remember, gosh, that movie. I think I had like twenty six changes or something, like twenty six different costumes, mm-hmm. and I got to try on like a bunch of wedding dresses. And you know, I haven't been married yet, so I, in my career, have been very fortunate to have tried on all kinds of wedding dresses. Yeah. Um. So you kind of get to know what you like and what you don't like, and. Uh, yeah, it was so much fun. I mean, like I mentioned the wedding march thing where everything fell into place. Like that's how I feel about the cast of Unleashing Mr. Darcy. So the fact that we were able to take everyone and then two years later make another movie with the same people, um, that was just like a dream come true. And totally like kind of like a bonus round sort of thing because I never imagined that there would be another. Like when we did the first one, it was never in the talks of, of Like, hey, there's going to be a second one soon. Like, it was truly because of the fans and because of the response of the movie that a second one was made. And so Mm -hmm. I'm still hopeful that maybe there'll be a third one, but um, that's kind of, like, not up to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, but I want to do it. So, Mm -hmm. so. There it would be fun. <laughs> it, would, it, would, it would be fun to yeah, see. Be. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it, it must, it must've been fun to get back together with Tammy and with that whole crew. Oh my gosh. Well, Tammy, Tammy Gillis, I mean, because of that movie became, has become mm-hmm. one of my really close friends. Like we're, anytime I'm in Vancouver, we hang out all the time and I absolutely adore her and she's such a talented actress and, uh, yeah, it's kind of just like getting to hang out with your friends and being paid for it, which is like the dream, I guess. Right. <laughs> I don't know how I got so lucky, but thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And then, you know, get, getting to work with Frances Fisher, she is mm-hmm. hilarious. I love her. And uh, yeah, that was a, that yeah. was really sweet. That's cool. That's great. Well, so then you had Autumn Stables. Yeah. And we really enjoyed that. Uh, it, it we saw it on. I I think it premiered on in Canada yeah. a lot earlier than here, but yeah. then we saw it on Amazon and we ended up reviewing it on the podcast. And oh, nice. it, it, yeah, it was a lot better than we thought it was going to be. Oh, I don't know okay. for some reason, like the okay. and just the, <laughs> the poster and that stuff. We were like, oh, I don't know about this. And then we watched it and it was actually really good. I think it had a nice heart about it because my my worry was because i i do think i get a little tired of the save the store save the farm save the whatever kind of storylines usually those are really boring to me i understand because there's no stakes like i don't believe for a second that the cute little store is really gonna 
close. Um, but anyway, so I, I was like, I don't know. But then because your character had been grieving and was, oh, it was dealing with so much. I thought there was a depth to it that I wasn't expecting. And Kevin McGarry's so great. And I thought you guys had nice chemistry. And the, the fact is he wasn't like a bad man of business. He was just trying to, you know, yeah. he was the normal person. So I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was solid. So it w was that a fun uh, film to make? Yeah, it was, um, it was shot in just outside of Toronto. And uh, I didn't know Kevin McGarry personally before. I knew that he was on Heartland, yeah. which I was also on. Um, it is so interesting how so many people I've worked with on Heartland, I've worked with now like years and years later. Like Tyler Hines also had an episode of Heartland. Oh, did he? <laughs> okay. They work together, but like there's all these, you know, we're all crossing the streams. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, Kevin McGarry was, uh, you know, was or still is on Heartland, I'm not sure. And so, you know, we had that in common and it was a very small cast and crew. Um, and it was all pretty much shot on that ranch there as far as I, you know my character is concerned which is so beautiful out in nature this beautiful log house um with you know the stable right there and getting to work with horses again was a dream I just love working with animals anytime and uh yeah I just you know and Andrew Simak and Bridget you know they're a married couple they direct and produce together these movies and uh I, I truly had, you know, it's, it's really, sometimes you work on movies where there's a big cast and a big crew and it's super fun, but getting to have like a little bit more of an intimate um, experience too on set is mm -hmm. you kind of just get to know people a little bit better. And it almost feels like summer camp where you're like away and you get to hang out in between scenes and, and they created such a great um, atmosphere on and off camera. And uh, yeah, I had a blast. And again, Kevin, McGarry, anytime I see him, like, at a Hallmark party or in Vancouver or wherever, it's like, Kevin! He's like a brother. <laughs> you know, like, I just yeah. love him so much. He is, I feel like I, I, I truly feel so lucky because I've worked with so many incredibly talented and fun people, and I feel like I'm, like, kind of a broken record when I keep saying how fun everyone is, but, like, I truly <laughs> mean it. And, and like once in a while, you know, you meet someone that it just doesn't really click, but you feel so fortunate in so many other ways that you're able to be like, eh, not, not everyone's going to love you and you're not going to love everyone. And that's mm -hmm. just how it goes. Right. Yeah. So, but in, you know, Kevin and I's circumstance, it was just like, love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I really particularly, I remember the scene where she's pack, she's packing up the house yeah. And, uh, that was, that was good in that one. I mean, it's tough, you know, like yeah. we, in life, we have a lot of baggage from experiences and sometimes we're not willing to acknowledge to ourselves that we want to let things go or that we're ready to yeah. move on. And, and we somehow become attached to these things that we don't really realize why we're attached to them. And then when we have to let them go, that's when like things come up, you know, our yeah. stuff comes up and as an actor, I just really love exploring humanity and like yeah. why we behave the way we do, why we hold on to things, what affects us, how we're hurt, what are, you know, we, we start to sh kind of um, like compartmentalize certain things and we're like, well, I'm not going to deal with that. So I'm going to move it away here. And like, I yeah. love exploring that and discovering yeah. that. So that, that was a, a really cool project, you know, similarly to Godwink where I got to really get in the meat of it. Mm -hmm. Take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They're the good folks over at Care Of, and they make getting vitamins and supplements easy and hassle-free. They can come right to your door so you don't have to go out shopping or take any kind of risk to go get your vitamins. They come right to you. And what's really nice is that you can take their online quiz and you answer some questions about your diet, your health goals, and your lifestyle, and they recommend the vitamins that will be the most helpful for you. And so, for instance, I took the quiz 
is. And it only, like I said, it only takes a few minutes and they, we were able to narrow down some things that will help me hopefully with my sleep, because that's one of my biggest health problems is that I have a hard time uh, with my sleep uh, issues. And uh, so it's really great. They come to you right to your door and you get these little packets that you, uh, you can take every day. And so if you are want to put some in your purse or you're traveling or something like that, uh, they're very, very, very easy for you to take. And, uh, and it's just really positive, very personal. There's a great attention to detail. They have great quality that you can see and taste. They focus on quality science and research that goes into each of their products and recommendations. They are, their yummy protein powders are made with wholesome ingredients you can recognize like organic cocoa and pink Himalayan sea salt. I recommend taking the quiz, getting the vitamins that you need, and uh, and checking out Care Of. Uh, for 25% off each of your first three months of Care Of, go to takecareof.com slash hallmarkies25. Enter code hallmarkies25. That's 25% off each of your first three months of Care Of. Go to takecareof.com slash hallmarkies25. Enter code hallmarkies25. So Romance in the Air is coming out. This, uh, it'll be when this airs it'll be uh that day so uh, can you tell us a little bit about the film yeah so um it is premiering on the hallmark channel on august 1st and uh it's um basically the story of eden who is um in marketing and her work has kind of gotten a little bit stale she's can't find her groove anymore and her boss basically sends her off on a forced vacation to go get her groove back and find herself. And so she decides to go on a trip with her best friend to the cabin where she spent all of her summers growing up. And uh, so she's kind of reminiscing, and she hasn't been there in years and years and years. And she's reminiscing, you know, to her friend Kate about all of the great times she had. And of course, she runs into um, her friend Riley, who she spent all of her summers with and was kind of the guy that she grew up with, but also always had a thing for, and, um, but also the one that got away. And she didn't, she doesn't realize that he's still there in the city and he owns a hot air balloon company. So she makes it her kind of duty to help promote his hot air balloon company that's not doing so well. And that helps, you know, kind of liven up the, the passion she has for marketing again. And of course, feelings arise for uh you know riley again and but eden does have a boyfriend back in the city so it's uh -oh. uh, um no no thing. no luck for him no good <laughs> <laughs> that was a oh, mistake <laughs> yeah <Ugh>. um, <laughs> yeah. never let your girlfriend go away with no. um, <laughs> on a soul searching adventure that's right that's right <laughs> uh, yeah it was really fun we got to shoot that in salt lake city and park city oh right by us yeah and then we yeah. also shot in lake tahoe so it was it's such a beautiful movie like you know beyond the story just the 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 backdrop of the movie is like so stunning that is a character and of itself in this in the movie um and you know utah is like so yeah. as you know so <laughs> next time next time you're out here let me know i'll give you some uh, restaurant tips <laughs> i really forgot that you guys are out there so yeah 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 cool. it was super fun and getting to work with torrence coombs who plays riley in the movie mm -hmm. again heartland um fellow heartland cast member back in the day uh so yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun we were you know it was a whirlwind shoot but we loved it it was shot actually last october which is why it's able to come mm -hmm. out as a new movie now mm -hmm. and uh and yeah lake tahoe is stunning and we get to go paddle boarding in the movie and you know we um we got to be in a hot air balloon which i was actually quite fearful of at first because um i'm quite scared of heights and yeah. so you know, I went up there, but we were tethered down, thank goodness. Um, so we didn't go too high. But once I was up there, I was also, I was kind of like, oh, I wish I could go higher. Like I, I was excited to kind yeah. of go and we couldn't. So perhaps one day I'll get to fulfill that, uh, that dream. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, this will be our first time seeing Florence uh, with a, without a British accent. Right. 
yeah. in, in the world of Hallmark, at least. Yeah, so, it's amazing how fun. he's had to have an accent in so many <laughs> things he's done. I know people think that he is British. I had to look yeah. it up and be like, oh, he's Canadian. Okay. Yeah, yeah totally. Totally Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a great guy. Another, like, just a cool dude. Uh-huh. And he got along really well. And what's actually re- really fun about Lake Tahoe as well is, I didn't know, but it's like half on the California side and then half on the Nevada side. So it's like, you could literally be like one step in Nevada, one step behind in, in California, which is uh-huh. pretty cool. That so, is cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, very good. We're excited for that, uh, to, to see that film. And so we'd like to end with some fun questions. Uh, and the last time you had the regular teen beat questions. And so we have to give you the Christmas, uh, holiday themes question. Okay. So, so, but on your, your Christmas cap, uh, to answer these. So, all right. First question. What is your favorite holiday drink? Ooh, uh, I do love uh, mold, mold wine. I really mm. enjoy mold wine. Okay. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Oh, shortbread. Hands down, shortbread. <laughs> Very don't, good. Even, don't even get me started on shortbread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. All right. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Ooh. Uh, I'd probably say White Christmas. Bing yeah. Crosby. Yeah. Good one. Good one. Yeah. All right. What is? Do you have a favorite classic Christmas movie that you like to watch? Ooh, I have a few. Um, I have A Christmas Story, which I mm-hmm. love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I obviously love National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation mm-hmm. and um, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Yeah, good choices. All right. Uh, do you have a memorable Christmas gift that you're like Red Rider BB gun moment as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> um, I. So this is pretty cool. I always wanted a dollhouse growing up and uh, I never had one. And then when I was, I think I was about 13 or 14, I've always been obsessed with miniatures, like hand, still to this day, like I, I see a miniature and I freak out. Like I love yeah. it so much. There's in fact a miniature world in Victoria in, in British Columbia. And I like started crying when I walked in. Anyway. <laughs> So I got, um, so one Christmas I was told, okay, Cindy, like go wait in the other room. And I was like, okay, what's going on? And then I had to close my eyes and then I opened them and my stepdad had built a dollhouse for me. Oh my gosh. And and I just like bawled my eyes out and it was like truly the most incredible, most thoughtful gift I'd ever gotten. And to this day, it's just, it's still the thing that stands out for me. That is great. I love that. All right. Which do you prefer, Scrooge or the Grinch? Ooh. Oh, that's tough. I'm going to go with Scrooge. All right. Good. Uh, clear lights or colored? Oh, colored. Okay. Uh, would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Build a snowman. Because sometimes you get like ice pieces in the ball, like the, the snowballs yeah. and hurt and no thanks oh so you guys play intense snow <laughs> snowball fights <laughs> well i grew up in montreal so there's sometimes there's a lot of like ice and yeah <laughs> like it's just a thing <laughs> all right would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper um medium i've got one way of doing it it's not fancy <laughs> and i don't use bows or anything like that so it, yeah it, it's doable it's serviceable Yes, there. Very it's good. not embarrassing, but I wouldn't <laughs> enter a contest or anything. Okay, good. All right, last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? Yes, I do. Yeah, what is your it ugly Christmas a, sweater? It has like a frosty kind of thing on it, and it actually has a three-dimensional carrot nose that sticks out. <laughs> <laughs> and it also has a um, the scarf is also 3D, so it hangs off as well, which is like- Oh my gosh. I, I, actually, my my best friend, Sarah, found it at a thrift store. We had to go to a um, an ugly sweater party. Yeah. And I was like, if you find anything for me, can you get it? And, and she bought me that one and I still have it. It's the best. You know it's a good ugly, ugly sweater if people are getting paled by it. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <You are laughs> Watch out my, like, eye, my yeah. eye. <laughs> you need like distance between you and- 
I guess that makes social distancing easier. Uh, yeah, I just wear my frosty sweater, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All year round. <laughs> well, very good. You pass the test. You yes. can make a Christmas movies. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Christmas is the best. Yes. Well, thank you so much. This was so much fun to get to catch up with you. And uh, we're good luck with the new movie. And let's make sure it's not two years before we yeah. talk again. <laughs> 100%. Thank you. Uh, so do you have social media that you want to share? Absolutely. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Cindy underscore Busby and same for Twitter at Cindy underscore Busby. And I also have a Facebook page and uh, a website. Great. Well, very good. We'll have all that in the description section. So please everybody follow Cindy and thank you again for taking the time to talk with us. I really appreciate course, it. Anytime. All right. We'd like to thank Cindy for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk with her. And let us know what you think about all the different things that we talked about. And you can make sure you're following the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast all over social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We so, so, so appreciate it. You can follow me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Please consider becoming a patron. It helps us so much. We have all our, that information in the description section. We're going to have a fun patron watch along coming up, a really fun one for August. So you're going to want to be a part of it. And then we also have our merch store, which has tons of fun Hallmark-inspired merch. So please check that out as well. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye, everyone.